morning and welcome to Palm Sunday at the Neighborhood Church. My name is Heidi Dennis. I'll be your worship leader this morning. A very special welcome to those of you joining us online, watching either by Facebook or YouTube. Please interact with each other in the comments. Um, let us know where you're watching from if you're new to the Neighborhood Church or even if you're not. We just love to see where everyone's watching from. Today in Kid City, we're talking about patience in life and in baking. And Jess sends her new friend, Matt, a special gift to help him with his baking. And today is the day that we celebrate Jesus coming into Jerusalem. So kiddos, I know you got some palm branches in your Kid City boxes. So go grab those, get them ready to wave them to Jesus as he comes in to, to join us today. Um, Pastor Joe's wrapping up this series on misused, misquoted, and misread scripture. So we're looking forward to that. But until then, let's rise or sit on your couch for our opening song.
today's scripture comes straight from the story of Palm Sunday from John 12. It comes from verse 13, and it says this. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. On Palm Sunday, Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, and people were begging him, shouting, Hosanna, which means, Lord, save us, save us now. They thought he was coming to begin his reign. They were they're begging for him. But we often confuse the word Hosanna with the word hallelujah, which comes from two Hebrew words, praise ye and Yahweh, which means praise ye the Lord. It's a, it's a call of thanksgiving. But on Palm Sunday, they shouted for him to save them, Hosanna, only to watch him die before their very eyes. I can't imagine the emotional roller coaster that must have been. I get emotional even thinking about it now. But three days later, they cried, hallelujah, because he had risen from the dead. You know, a lot can happen between a hosanna and a hallelujah, between asking God for your prayers and seeing him come through and answering your prayers. So if you're waiting on your hallelujah today, take heart that he is working behind the scenes right now on your behalf and hold on to the hope of hallelujah as we sing this next song.
Give it up for the TNC band on Palm Sunday. Woo! That is a great kickoff to Palm Sunday. I love it. And on Palm Sunday, I just wanted to welcome you to our online experience. Uh, I'm Pastor Joe with the Neighborhood Church, and I helped plant this church 12 years ago as uh, we started off in Easter of 2012. And uh, I just wanted to say that Hosanna is something that was said when they were coming in, as you said, in a, such a wonderful way. And uh, they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And usually when everyone's in here, I have everyone shout it in the church. And I just wanted to stop for a second. And would you guys be kind enough to shout it with me? Would that be all right? Can you guys do that with me? All right, here we go. I'm going to say Hosanna, and you guys shout Hosanna in the highest. All right? And, that, and we need to make it real loud or we'll have to do it again. All right, here we go. Ready? Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! That was really good, you guys. That was really good. I love it. Uh, I just wanted to welcome you and uh, share a quick story about Palm Sunday. Uh, we uh, have usually decorated the church and all these wonderful palms. And what we do is we set them out like they would have in Jesus' time. We set them out on the ground, and you walk in over all these palms, and the whole church is decorated in palms across every bit of floor that you can see. And I remember last year when we were doing this, that when we went to do it, um, we opened the first box of palms, and we get them from a place called Eco Palms. And Eco Palms is an eco-friendly place that harvests the palms, and it's a very tight schedule because they ship the palms fresh. And so they ship them out to the church the week of Palm Sunday. And so it's so nerve-wracking because you just don't know if they're going to arrive. And you don't know if they're coming. It's like Thursday before Palm Sunday. And then poof, these boxes arrive and it says Eco Palm. And you're like, this is so what? It's like a gift from heaven. The heavens have opened. And we sat as a worship team and we were getting ready to decorate. And we opened the, whoosh, opened the first box and we opened it up. And that box had gotten rotten. And we opened up to this aroma of not was resurrection. We have opened to the aroma of like a good Friday, but it is Palm Sunday and we are gone. So we shifted that box to the side and went to the next one and it was beautiful. And so on Palm Sunday, it is a Hosanna. It is an exciting moment for the church to come together and to say that we are ushering ourselves into Holy Week. We are coming together into a place where Jesus is coming into Jerusalem. We're coming in to say that Jesus is going to the cross. And we're meeting Jesus on the cross on Good Friday, but then we come to Easter, a celebration of that resurrection, and it begins today, Holy Week. And here in the church, we always start every single Sunday, whether it is Holy Week or not, by sharing our vision. And we have two parts to our vision that I want to share with you today. The first part of our vision is, Heidi Dennis? Change church. Change church. That's exactly right. We want to change church like Christ changed the world. And what that means is that we are sacrificial. What that means is we see the people that are lining up to meet Jesus, and the church should be a reflection of that. The church should be a place where people can come to know Jesus on a personal level. And the second part of our vision is create relationship. To create relationship. We create relationship with God and our neighbor every single day. Not just on Sunday, not just on Palm Sunday, not just during Holy Week, but every single day. Because we believe that relationship with God will change us. And so we are here to change church and relationship. And we do that in incredible ways. Through music, we do that through worship. And we do that also through kids ministry, which is coming up soon. But before we get to kids ministry, I wanted to share some ways that you can help support the ministry of TNC and the work that we do to really serve our neighbors here through things like the free pantry and food distributions and local mission and global mission. And there are a couple different ways that you can give today. Uh, the first way you can give is you can text your giving. I don't know if you do that, but wherever you're at, whether you're in church, whether you're at home, you can text your giving. And you can text your giving to 8 four, three, two, one. That is text you're giving to eight, four, three, two, one. And I had a question last week. They said, where does it go? Like when you text your giving, what happens? And that's a great question. And so we texted our own giving and we're like, where does it go? And it's really neat process. Actually, it connects you into our church database. And from that, you can receive our church emails. You can receive text messages about worship that are coming up. And it's a safe and secure portal to do your giving. And so it's an incredible way. And that connects you to the church center app. The Church Center app is the second way to give. And through the Church Center app, you can give right on your throne through our mobile app. And what that will also give you is access not only to giving, but groups, events that come up, information about the church. It's really an incredible. And last, you can give on our website. You can give right on our website on neighborhood.church forward slash give. And you can go to that website and you can give to any number of funds that are on there also. So there's three incredible ways to give. But I'm excited now because we have met a new friend. We met a new friend last week and we're meeting him again. And there's bacon going on and crazy things are happening in Kid City. So I don't want to wait anymore because it's about patience. And I can't wait anymore because I'm not a patient person. And so we're going to kick it over and watch Kid City. Red velvet cake. That'd be yummy and colorful for Easter. And uh, I guess a little bit of salt too. And, uh, oh, <laughs> hey, Kid City kids. It's me, your new friend, Matt. Yeah, I'm just baking up a delicious cake give me some practice with patience. See, I have to wait for the cake to bake before I eat it, which is super hard. 
But it's also worth it to have a delicious cake. <laughs> I also have to wait a whole other week before I open this mysterious Easter egg. If you saw our video last week, you know that this egg just magically appeared in my fridge with a note saying, do not open until Easter. Ugh, it has been super hard not opening it this week. I really want to know what's inside, but sometimes we have to wait for things even when it's tough. There's one thing I don't have to wait for though. Jess sent me a gift to welcome me to the neighborhood church. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Let's see what's inside. Oh, hey, it's one of those uh, digital assistant things. Oh, that's really nice. You know what? Let's use it to call Jess and we can say thank you. Um, <clears throat> Methuselah. What do you want? Uh, call Jess. You want less? Less of what? No, no, I, I didn't say less. Call Jess. Huh? I haven't played chess in years, but I guess I'll try. No, 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 no. I don't want to play chess. I want you to call Jess. Hold on, hold on. Uh, let me put in my hearing aids. Oof. Did it fall asleep? Methuselah! Oh. Huh? What? Look at this mess! Sure, I'll call Jess. Hold on. Oh, hey, Matt. Did you get the gift I sent you? Yeah. Thanks, but uh, it isn't exactly the best assistant in the world. I know. I had to get rid of it. It sent a bunch of bats to get me last week. So this wasn't so much a gift as a prank. <laughs> yeah, have fun with Methuselah. Hey, what now? We were just saying your name. We weren't talking to you. Yeah, whatever. It's your turn in chess. Hurry up. I don't want to play chess. I wanted you to call Jess. Oh, you want to be blessed, eh? Who do you think you are, Jesus riding on a donkey? I am definitely not Jesus, but it's kind of funny that you bring up Jesus riding on the donkey because that's our Bible story for today. I love this story. There's so much joy in the crowds as they will come out to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Bible said people leave palms down on the ground for Jesus' donkey to walk on. It also says they laid their clothes on the ground also. Uh, I hope they didn't put all their clothes on the ground. Oh, no, no, no. It was just their coats. Well, maybe we should lay my coat on the floor to clean up all this mess that just got made. Or should I put palms down? I would try paper towels instead. Good idea. I have to be patient though. Cleaning this up is gonna take a while. Speaking of patience, good job not opening your Easter egg yet. Well, I mean, the note on the back says do not open until... Wait a minute! It doesn't say that anymore! It says, look in Jess's fridge! Have you been in your fridge today? Yeah, I was just in there right before you called. That's so weird! Should I check again? Yeah! Fingers crossed! Nothing's in there. <gasps> Look! There's an egg in my fridge! What? That's crazy! Yeah, and it says, do not open until Easter. Huh, but mine still says to, oh no! Look, my note changed too! It says, do not open until Easter again. What is going on? I guess we're gonna have to wait until next Sunday to find out. Ugh, waiting is so hard. Yeah, it is. You know, but while we wait, let's see if the kids can guess what saw inside of our eggs. Uh, we've got some awesome prizes to anyone who can guess what's inside of this egg, and yours too, I guess. So, kiddos, shout out your guesses 
or if you're at home, go ahead and write them in the comments. Let's hear those guesses. What could be inside? It could be anything. Do you think it's alive? Do you think it can talk? I don't know what it is. It makes noises. It doesn't sound very soft. I don't know. Ooh, there's already a bunch of great guesses. Jess, there's a giant egg in the fridge in our garage. Yeah, I know. It has a note on it that says, don't open until Easter. I just saw the note, Jess. Oh, you have one too. I have too. one too. Oh my gosh. But yours is much bigger yours than mine. Yours is much smaller than mine. <laughs> Jess, I really want to open it now. Patience, Pastor oh. Joe, patience. All right, I'm gonna go put it back in the garage. I'm gonna go put it back in the garage fridge. I'll wait until Easter, all okay, right? Okay, good. I super have patience. While we're waiting, kids, make sure you get your guesses in the comments before Easter Sunday. And be sure to join us on Easter when we open these eggs and see what's inside. Checkmate. What? Hey, I got tired of waiting for you in chess. So I skipped your turns and beat you with a checkmate. Wait for me? I, I didn't even want to play chess!
neighborhood church. It is Palm Sunday and I'm coming to you from the desert outside Las Vegas, Nevada. And I imagine this was a lot like what Jesus felt like entering into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. That's the text today, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And as we think about this text, I'm thinking about the people and how they paved the way for Jesus. And I want you to hear this text because this text is talking about them laying their cloaks on the ground and them spreading out palm leaves on the ground. So Jesus had something to walk in on the donkey he was always riding in. And the disciples even laid their cloaks on top of the donkey. It was this almost presentation of what was going to happen next. And the people were calling out for Jesus calling out for Jesus, Hosanna. And so I want to read this right now, and I want to jump in right now, right away because we have two special stories I want to share with you today. Two special stories that um, I think talk about new journeys. They talk about unexpected journeys and not knowing what's going to come next, but moving forward towards that anyways. So let's jump into scripture. If you got the good book, we love that. Uh, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 21. Matthew is a gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And as you um, go into the gospels, they tell the story of Jesus Christ from birth all the way to resurrection and ascension. And we're going to be in Matthew chapter 21, the triumphant entry. And we love the good book. So stop for a moment, wherever you're at watching, and go grab your Bible. If it's in the back room, go grab your kid's Bible. Get them all together so that way you guys can read scripture together and if you don't have the Bible that's okay we want you to go ahead and download the Bible app we're on there and search for an event called the neighborhood church and as you look for the neighborhood church you're gonna see on there that we have devotion we have scriptures we have links back to our website all those wonderful things and so definitely check that out and so here's the scripture it's gonna be the triumphant entry into Jerusalem Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 11 and here's what it says now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage, the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village in front of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied to a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet saying, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. Then the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them on their cloaks as he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, who is this? And the crowd said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. When they were shouting Hosanna, that means rescue us, save us. See, they wanted a king to come in and save them and to sit and lord over them. And Jesus was coming towards the cross. See, that's unexpected journey to me. Those are two different journeys. That's a journey that the people are on and they were spreading the way for Jesus to present the way, to say, this is the way that you should go and saying, we don't want you to be dirty when you come in to be the new king for us and to save us. And so they spread out those palm branches, but Jesus knew the journey, knew that the journey was different than they expected, but the journey was one that they needed. And so I wanna share with you two stories right now. I wanna share with you two stories of journeys that are coming to be unexpected journeys, unexpected results that are coming from a journey of a church and what's gonna happen with a new church to a journey of a new family that's really important and special to me. And both have fears and both have excitement and both are unexpected, but both need to do life. And so share these journeys with me as we go and take a look at this. Neighborhood Church, I am in Santan Valley, Arizona, and I have something exciting. I know it's Palm Sunday, and I wanted to kick a little bit different kind of message today. And in fact, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about some new things that are happening, paving the way for new ministry, paving the way for new family. And I'm thinking about it in like in light of Jesus and the people who threw down palms in front of him and shouted Hosanna. And I have something exciting. I don't know if you know this, but on Easter of 2012, we planted the church. And I am here with a good friend of mine who is, again, just got into a new building, is planting again on Easter this year. And they're getting everything done just like we did. So I'm going to go meet him right now. His name's Charles. He is the pastor over here. And so we're going to walk in and see what he's up to right now. Come on with me. Charles, what? let's go. Charles, what's up? My boy, it's been so long. <laughs> it has man, been too what, long. What brings you back to the sunshine? Oh, man. Well, I came because my sister's having a baby. Uh, a baby? Today. She's try- yeah, well, not today. She did not uh, 
to go into labor. Okay. So she's just waiting. That God's got the patient timing. And so, so um, but I heard that you got something new going on, and it's Palm Sunday. Looking forward to Easter. So, Charles, tell me the good news. Tell me what church you're pastor at. Well, I'm the pastor at Crossroads Church here in Santan Valley, where we meet God, meet friends, and guess what? We make life better. Oh, that is a great vision line. Look at you. You threw down the vision. That was really good. It's like a change church and create relationship. That's like God right. changed her. Oh, that was good. Uh, so what you got going so, on? So hey, we, tell uh, me, what's we, going on? Dude, this is our, our new facility, our new building. So we're a church plant, uh, the youngest uh, here in Arizona, youngest Lutheran church. So this is our worship space. That's awesome. So we're, we're in full-blown construction mode. Uh, just trying to get everything ready. Everything ready for what? For Easter Sunday, <laughs> baby. So. so all this, all this so by we, Easter Sunday. All this. All Can I this. say eight days? Can I say eight days? Don't is that all right? Me. Don't tell me that. Don't tell you eight hey, days. Hey, but guess what? This, this is what I know. Yeah. My Savior rose in three days. Oh! oh! So I that's think really, we can do it. I think that's there will really be good. a resurrection. So, okay, so this is excitement that you're feeling like this Palm Sunday to me, right? Yes. Like people, yes. Jesus is coming yes. in. Something new is yes. happening. The it's Savior's exciting. here, right? That's that's new church feel, right? So yes. tell me. Now, give me, the, what are you excited for that's coming up in the church? Right? What are you excited for on Easter Sunday for people to experience? What I'm excited for is for us, we're actually going to be gathering in person. Yeah. So we're going to relaunch our church. We've been online. We've been working wow, great. online. So this will be the first Sunday back for everyone. And the community is excited. The community is getting pumped for us. And we're just going to just be hanging out, rocking Jesus. Man, this is a Palm Sunday to yes. Easter feel, like everyone yes. gathering together. That is really cool. Exactly. I did not know this would be your first Sunday back in person. This will be our first Sunday back in person. So, oh, man. Uh, everybody's excited and anxious and chipping in. Yeah, that's uh, great. Arizona I can see you got people working in the background. Who's here with you? Who yes, you got in the background so over here? Have, uh, my wife is in the... Uh, I see white. you're talking. Yes. She's talking. pointing at the stained and wood. That you just Pam see. all the way in the bathroom. Hi, Pam. Bathroom Pam. Pam. How are you doing? <laughs> Paint walls, Pam. I love it. And that, that she's Good one, volunteer. She's one of my, that's my board member. So. That's your board member. Okay. Yes, so board members, they like. All right. I'll talk they, to her afterwards yeah, and give her the real information. All and right. And uh, Seneca is also uh, on our board. Uh, she's in the black. That's uh, great. Shirt. And then Carter is our thespian. Nice. They're uh, great. Theater. I love yes, it. Yes. Love theater. It's uh, awesome. So he's. He's sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. All right, so we talked about excitement. Yeah, so this right, now, is our, our worship space. All right, we got that over uh, there. You got chairs still coming? Chairs are coming. Chairs oh my will goodness. be here uh, next week. Charles, tomorrow. I told you, when we started, we forgot that we had no outlets. So we had to go around and put duct tape over every outlet in the entire that church on Easter Sunday. So yeah, we had like a kid's chairs in the building. I mean, we maybe had like that half our chairs. Funny. Like we didn't finish our worship wall. Like it wasn't done. Like really? it didn't get done. We couldn't finish it in time. Wow. Uh, it became wow. something beautiful. But that's like... That's where you're headed. Yeah, but you'll get something. Hey, and we're we're just going to embrace the industrial look and feel. So we'll have a corrugated That's metal. That's incredible. Um, and you're an industrial complex, right? Right. This, so it's great. Yeah. So the cool thing is the ability to do evangelism and outreach. There's a auto. Uh, shop right up there. So I'm going to start a Bible study that's called Garage Band for Men. And just <laughs> hang great. out and just do a Bible study right there in the garage. Oh, this is great. Um, yeah, so this is pretty cool. So then this space that we're kind of walking Yeah, tell into, me about it. This will become like our living room. Great. Uh, so this will just be where people can just gather with coffee from our coffee shop. Uh, oh, which great. Is the station that's down in the next... You guys have a coffee shop too? Yes. So My down goodness. in Florence, we're building a coffee shop called The Station. So, uh, is that a baptismal font up top? What, what's uh, up top? That is where the angelic choir, <laughs> known as our youth, I'm sorry, uh, youth great. Have, have dubbed that spot. As okay, there. great. So that's the loft. Uh, yeah. They'll be hanging out up there. Um, we have a little office up there. And How many bathrooms do you have? We just have one. And what type of bathroom is it? Uh, it's a family style bathroom. <laughs> I like right? that. That's all you need. One family style. Right, I love it. It's a family <laughs> bathroom. That's all you need. All right, so give me this. So give me this. Right. We're talking through church. We're talking through Palm Sunday, right? We talked about the excitement, yes. right? What's some of the fears you have? Yeah. Be real with me right now. What some are some of the, of the fears? fears that I have for Palms for Easter Sunday? Yeah, Palm it's Palm Sunday, Sunday this Sunday. For yeah. Palm Sunday, uh, some of the fears I have, um, you know, it's part of the story that uh, I never really picked up on. And so when it talks about how Jesus rode into town, people were making a big to do about him. Yeah. Jesus looked at everything and he just left. Yeah. He wasn't excited about it. He just left. So my concern is that people come in and there's like wow. no excitement, right? Wow. They're just like, yeah. eh, I'm not impressed. And so it's a reminder to really to keep me humble, right? Yep. Like we're doing all this stuff, but to why are we doing it? Well, we're doing it because we want to really just give glory to the king. That's right. Um, 
but then there's the fear of like him just being like, I'm not impressed. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that our hearts are pure. Our hearts are ready to receive him, to worship him. Um, but, you know, I'll be honest, we're in construction mode. And so there's not a whole lot of... <laughs> there's not thinking time, right? There's not thinking time. You know, when we plan the to... meditation time that's it. been pretty low. Pretty <laughs> You're low busy right for now. God, right? Like, You're busy serving like, God I'm right doing, now. I'm, I'm doing, doing, doing right I'm now. doing for the Lord right now. You know, when we started first Sunday, 149 people. First Sunday, right. second Sunday, 23. That's right. Uh, and, and so, I, I mean, I echo that fear, but it was that moment that also God, I think, affirmed in us the call that said, hey, we're not supposed to start in a way that right. says it's all glory to the people coming, right? right? right. It's glory to God. And yep. that means we serve and continue yep. serving, which is incredible because this is not the start of the church, right? This is very no, this a relaunch. Is our, a relaunch. This yeah. is our, um, you know, ever since when COVID hit, we just kind of went online. So we went into a ga- or scattered mode. Yeah. And so now we're uh, going to just be coming into a gathered mode for the first time. And so I guess another real fear is we have no idea who's coming back. Yeah, right. We have no idea who's um, going to be a part of the church. Um, and so that's a very real fear. Yep. Um, and, and a real embrace, right? Yeah. Oh. But to think about the people who are coming and the people you haven't met yet, yeah, like that embrace is going to well, be, what's, it's what's, almost going to feel like a new a church. The trip is that there have been so many people that have worshiped with us online. Yeah. And they're like, now that they know that we're like meeting and we have a new building, like they're like, yeah, we'll be there Sunday. That's I'm awesome. Like, Whoa, it's crazy. Man, it's just, I mean, it's like Jesus, someone's it's, coming to town, right? Yes, like right, right. Jesus <laughs> coming to town, Easter's coming. You're like, come to the new church. That's right. That's I right. love it. I love it. This is incredible. I am so happy that you invited me over yeah, to the space for I'm a little so time. Glad during. you came through. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's great. All right, I got a question for you. Yeah. So we're in a series right now, right? Even though it's Palm Sunday leading the Holy Week, we're okay. finishing off a series, and the series is Miss. Missing the point of scripture. Christians taking scripture out of context, right? Oh, I'm so, okay. yeah, I know, right? Yeah, right, right, you can see right. that. I'll send you all the gear. <laughs> this, is great. this is pastor talk right now. Like, you just got some real pastor talk. Hey, can you send me the details on that sermon series? Right. That'd be a good one. Uh, definitely. But here's my question for you. What do you think is the most misused scripture by Christians? Oh, my gosh. You did put me on the spot. I did put you on the spot. I told you I was going to. The most misused Yeah, misquoted, misused, misled, um, misguided. I, I, What's interesting, yeah. I think it's John three sixteen. Oh, that's the first thing that people said in the church. Really? It's crazy that you said yeah. it. Why would you say that? I think uh, we miss the fullness, the beauty, and the grace in that message. It's something. Wow. I mean, I grew up Lutheran, right? Yeah. So there is that grace based understanding that we we see and we live life. And so when we come to a realization, the foundation. And you just strip it all away to the essence for God so loved the world. That's drop the mic, game changer. Yep. It's, it's set. It doesn't matter. And so, uh, you know, I just actually I talked about it last week at our church. God came from Muslims. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. I just lost like two people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like two people just left our yeah. church because I said that. But God came for everyone. Right. Yeah. He loved the world. Yeah. And so I think that is one of the most misunderstood, most abused scripture, because we always tend to think that we have to work our way of earning yeah, ourselves into, grace. into God's mm-hmm. good graces. And so it's really nothing that we, it's, he loved the world. Yep. Right. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray for you on Easter as right. you launch, right? We're, we're going to record please a video do, of us praying do, for you guys. Do, <laughs> it's gonna, and it's going to be wonderful. I'm going to send you some pictures of our start. Okay. So it will it will show you our humble start. Right. So you can be like, hey, we, we did better I, than I the neighborhood. I remember the stories. I remember <laughs> the stories. So the good. last time uh, I was out there, remember I came and hung out with yeah, you Yeah, that's right. For uh, one of your events. So that, yeah. was, that was a lot of fun. So That's awesome. We'll get our teams together, right, and hang out and Absolutely. talk shop and church and life. Absolutely. and vulnerable. Well, Charles, again, thanks for letting me be here, and I'm going to get back to preaching. All right. Talk to you later. <laughs> <See ya. laughs> So you just saw Charles Newman and Crossroads Church, which is going to be awesome. It feels a lot like the neighborhood when we first started, but this next journey is also one that is super close to my heart. In fact, it's my own family. And I'm walking you in on a special day into my own family so we can talk about another unexpected journey. So check this out. So neighborhood church, I've come to my sister's house uh, to see if she's going to have the baby. And uh, I got asked to help to set up her baby room, which is super awesome. But I'm going to take you up there and see if we can't get like five minutes with Heather just talking about what is this feeling as she prepares for this new path. And I think it's a lot like Jesus on Palm Sunday. Like all these people expected something different from Jesus. They all expected different realities. And so I think hearing from Heather um, about what she expects with this new baby is we're helping her set and pave the way. I'm thinking about the people laying down palms. And as I was setting up these shelves in her office and laying vinyl on the walls and different things like that, like we're paving the way for this child that's to come. And I think on Palm Sunday, they were paving the way for Jesus and the Jesus they expected. So let's go check on Heather. We're at 
her house right now and see um, see what it's like to get ready for a baby. So Heather's got some Great Danes. Oh, what's up, Natiri? How are you? Hi, Natiri. How are you? It's good to see you. Yeah. And then this is Sadie. What's up, Sadie? How are you? She's a guard dog. Yep, yeah, just a big old guard dog. All right. Let's go check out this baby room. Jess and I have been working in there, and Heather's been in there. My mom and my dad. My dad helped for like five minutes, and then he went down to eat something. Never came back. I'm just saying. So, all right. Let's see what we got going on. Ooh, is this the baby room? It's the baby room. There it is. What's up, baby mama? Hey. How are you? I'm ready. You're ready. <laughs> I'm ready. So, uh, just to just to show around the baby room, all right? We got beautiful lamps. There's Jess, right, helping out. All right. Got some beautiful curtains, and then look at that. Love you then. Love you still. Always have. Always will. Got some books. So helping get some shelves up. Got the beautiful Evelyn. Now her short name is gonna be Eva. No, it's not. <laughs> what is it going to be? What is it going to be? Evie or Evie. Evie or Evie, right? And then Evie. on this wall behind, we're going to do a big, like, vinyl tree, right? Is that true? And it's coming today, right? Yeah. So we've got a big vinyl, beautiful tree, like a cherry blossom tree. And we got some pictures ready for um, new newborn pictures, right? Mm -hmm. Which will be absolutely wonderful. So, Heather. I just wanted to um, grab you for a couple quick seconds. So it's Palm Sunday coming up on Sunday. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to, one, uh, talk about like this triumphant entry of Jesus in Jerusalem. But like they paved the way. They laid down palms. Like this room is preparation for a way of something that's changing. So when is your due date? Today. <laughs> it's today, isn't it? Today it is. I'm sitting in this chair. <laughs> today, baby. It is absolutely today. Okay. And um, how do you feel? Do you feel like the baby's going to come today? Maybe she'll come on Easter. Maybe she'll come on Easter. Who knows? Okay. Maybe who's coming and, on Easter? Yes, absolutely. So tell me some of the feelings and emotions. Like, talk me through what it means, like, to pave the way for this child. What's it been like getting ready? And has there been any emotion change since, like, the beginning and now being, like, a week away and today being the due date? What's your emotion change for, like, this new way that's coming? I'll tell you, there has been such an interesting shift in the last month of my pregnancy where you just hone in on nesting and what you need to do to become the parents that we need to become, um, preparing, everything needs to be settled, everything needs to be cleaned and organized. It's just a, a very instinctual feeling that I got the last month of my pregnancy. Very, very much uh, mother hen before there you go. the baby's even out. Do you feel settled? Do you feel like you know everything that's coming? Do you, do you feel that? Absolutely terrified. <laughs> Absolutely terrified. That's good. What are you terrified? What, what's scary right now? Uh, first time parents, um, not knowing. We have a whole human that we have to keep alive. And um, it's not just us anymore. You know, we you you try and build a very strong foundation in your marriage before you have a child. And I feel like we have gotten there in our marriage. We have a very strong foundation. Um, but we are scared. Uh, we don't know what's coming. Um, and we're just trying to prepare as best we can. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the fears, right? Yeah. Scared, don't know what's coming, and that's okay, right? Yeah. Jess and I have been talking with you a lot. You know, yeah. mom's been sharing stuff too, right? Yeah. And just talking about it. Um, we showed you our two crazy kiddos, right? And so you got a, <laughs> you got a good life of like 9 and 11 is yeah. right now. So talking about the fear, okay, like for what's coming, what are you excited about? Like what's the one thing that you don't know but you're very excited about? I think to to become a mom to mm. just to become the person that my child needs to become mm. needed by her to hold her uh, to mold her into this just this beautiful human being um and i feel to like just have that bond as a family uh with me and andrew uh building that bond together um, I'm probably going to meet my great dame too. That's my, that's my first child. Right <laughs> yeah, now. they came out, right? That's the first child. Is this? Yeah. yeah. That's the first child. What's baby. up, Natiri? How are you? Yeah. I know. <laughs> You're just, what's this room? Right? Natiri's even scared. That's what's happening right now. She's been preparing too. So what's stuff. left? What's left to prepare? Like the moment's almost here. What do you feel like is left on your list? Or do you feel now like... It's time and you've done as much as you can. I feel like we've done as much as we can. The one thing that we have left, if we can even prepare for it, is the day she arrives. It's yeah. just is just honing in on the blessing 
um, and trying to release that fear and allowing it to just be a blessing and just letting her enter into the world however she may. No pressure. We are here until tomorrow morning. I'm just saying, like we came up for the birthday, literally with our game, we're here for it. So no pressure. I'm just saying it out loud. Here to tomorrow morning. Yeah. And so, uh, but you know what? Let's go exercise. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, we're going to go eat some spicy tacos yeah. on a really long walk. And then we're putting you on a treadmill. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> this is awesome. Hey, I've loved being here with you. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. I'm so happy to be standing in this room for you. And I'm excited for you to become a mom. And uh, I'm excited that you welcome Jess and I into your home, right, for this kind of last moments. Um, knowing you just as my sister. Yeah. Now, after this, you're going to be sister and a mom, which is going to yeah. be crazy awesome. And thank you for doing my nursery the rest of the way. Hey, we'll keep on working you're on it. Yes, we're helping pave the way right now. <laughs> Love you, it's awesome. Love you too. Hey, it's uh, Heather and Joe back. Um, I wanted to, I realized that the whole time I was just filming Heather and we didn't get on <laughs> camera together. And uh, this is just for me to say I love you. I'm very excited for you to become a mother. I'm very excited for Andrew to become a father. Um, I think it's going to be, and you two are going to be incredible parents. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine a better time to be with you than thinking about really, as I've been thinking about this whole message, Jesus coming in Jerusalem and like, what were people thinking? You know, what were they imagining that he would be as a king, mm -hmm. as a savior, these different things. And I think about you and what you're imagining, like becoming a mother mm -hmm. and what you and hope what for. Gonna, I know. Like, she what, gonna be? Who's she going to be to you guys and right? who's she going to be like mold uh -huh. you guys into. And so uh -huh. it's just an incredible reality. And, uh, so I think you're incredible. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have some touches on this nursery, yes. right? Because I love my design, if you yeah. guys know. Um, but yeah, it's just wonderful time to be here. So I love you. Love you. And I'm excited for you to have the baby tonight. I'll try. I'll do my best. You need to keep on trying because we're here for another day. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Hey, I love you. Love you. So you just got to see my sister and I in her baby room on her due day. <laughs> see, we traveled the whole country to meet her on her due day, hoping that we'd see a child. That was our expected journey. The unexpected result um, that, yeah, there was no baby. <laughs> and I'm here to the next day updating you that, yeah, there's still no baby. Um, and so God is doing some special waiting time right now. But I wanted to continue our series too because I think in all the different things we're talking about, we're talking about journeys today and journeys with Christ and journeys with God. And so we've been talking through a series for the last three weeks that is missing the point, missing the point of scripture. And uh, we've been through a lot of different scriptures, but I wanted to take one that I thought of with my sister especially on her new journey that I wanted to say to her, but I also want to give you the context around it because I still want to say it because it sounds good. And it's Psalm 4610 and it says this. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in all the earth. But we all know, verse 10, be still and know that I am God. And my sister, in all her fear and all her excitement, do you know what I wanted to say? Be still. That's what I wanted to say. To Charles, getting ready for Easter church, Easter Sunday, I wanted to say, be still and know that God is still God. And I love that verse because it does remind me of how God interacts in our life. But remember this, this is the Old Testament in Psalms. And so how we misconstrue and take this verse out of context as Christians is that it's intended in a little different way. See, we want to bring like the Jesus reality into this in that be still and know that I'm God is what Jesus would say to us. Be still. Be still and know that the kingdom is near. But Jesus came as a new commandment. Jesus came as a new law. And so when we look back at God in the Old Testament, we have to think about things just a little bit different. And so I want to read you in the context clues that we talked about in week one, just a couple verses before this. And here's what it says. In verse six, it says this. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come behold the works of the Lord. He has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. And then it says, be still and know that I am God. See, what this is talking about in Psalm 46 is that there were wars raging with heathens, as they call them in the Bible. Those who didn't believe in God, those who had other gods or made idols of other things. And God was saying, be still, I will take care of that. You don't have to fight that war. I will handle the idolatry. I will handle the heathens is what God is saying. And God's saying, be still, but that doesn't mean don't be active. That doesn't mean that we sit back and wait on God. What God is saying is be still for those who don't believe in me, but for those who do believe in me, go. And this is where we come into the reality of our relationship with Jesus. Go and make. Go and make. Go and make disciples in all the nations, baptizing them. See, that's our new reality. So be still was for a moment of idolatry. What we need to do is be active. We need to have voice. We need to talk about the coming kingdom. 
And I have to say as pastor, with the things that have happened in the recent weeks, that we cannot be still, that we have to have a voice, that we have to have moments of silence for the lives that were lost in Atlanta, in Boulder, Colorado, in Virginia, but that we also have to stand in the midst of these things and stand for the sake of what the gospel represents, love. What the gospel teaches us to do is move into these conversations with the depth of compassion and with grace, but also understanding that God gave us a reason to look forward to the kingdom, to say that we need to stand in the midst of hard, intense conversations to be Christians. The context we need to be in is those tough conversations to bring the reality of Christ, and that is grace. And so I'm asking you right now, what are you paving the way for? What are you paving the way for? If they shouted Hosanna and paved the way for Jesus, and Jesus knew it was the cross, I think Jesus is giving that ministry to us. Jesus is giving the ministry to us to stand in the midst of these tough conversations and pave the way for what is coming next. So I ask you the tough question this week as we close out the series on Palm Sunday, knowing that Jesus is walking towards Good Friday in the cross, how are you paving the way for the love that Jesus is going to show us on the cross? Because what Jesus did on the cross is stand for us in the midst of our sin and brokenness for forgiveness. And I think we can do the same. So on this Palm Sunday, decide what you're paving the way for and make it for Jesus. Neighborhood Church, I love you. It was great to see you. We got some exciting things coming up this week. We got Good Friday happening, and we got that happening on Friday, and it's an evening online performance only. So we want to make sure that you're there for that worship, um, and you're going to see it. There's incredible. We've invited multiple people in to come help read and do different parts of the service, so it's going to be great. And then we have Easter Sunday at 9 and 1040, but we want you to register. We want you to register online, and uh, you can do that on the Church Center app. You can do that on Facebook or our website, and we want you to join us in that. And that'll be online and in person on Easter. But neighborhood church, I love you. I'm excited to see you on Easter. I'm excited to be with you to celebrate the resurrection of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And to that I say, and all God's people said, amen.
for joining us today. Be sure to join us on Friday at 6 p.m. online for our special Good Friday service. And next Sunday is Easter. So be sure to register for our either 9 a.m. or 1040 a.m. services in person. But until then, even though worship is over, the, the service, service has just, just begun. begun. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.